Hey guys, John here and welcome back to Synthwave Week. Now today's patch is gonna be a bass, but it's not gonna be a bass ARP. This one's a little bit softer, a little bit more round, and it also has a kind of a trick up its sleeve to make it sound a little bit more uh, synthy, I suppose. So let's hop into Bitwig and let's check this guy out. So this one's called Vintage Bass. It sounds a little something like this. So here it kind of sounds a little stand-up-y. However, we can give it a little bit of grit on the first macro. Add a little bit of resonance. And this one down over here is folded, which kind of gives it a little bit synthy vibe, like I was saying. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun here. So let's go ahead and refresh this guy for now. And let's hop into a fresh copy of Pigments here on the second channel. And let's start recreating this bad boy one to one. Okay, so the first thing we should need to look at is gonna be this analog engine right over here. So let's change the first engine to analog. Now this patch is basically gonna be made with square waves or technically pulse waves with a different duty cycle, right? So over here, let's go to our first pulse wave and our width is gonna be 0.779. Something kind of like that here. And then the second one, let's bring this up into the mix as well. I believe these are both going to be full. And the next duty cycle is going to be 0.671. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, 671. There we go. Okay, so both of these are going to be down an octave. We could do the engine, but you know what? Let's just copy the patch as it is. Okay, so we have this. Pretty cool. Okay. So next thing that we kind of need to add, we have a little bit of modulation going on here with LFO1, which is a very, very subtle thing, right? It's not gonna make too much of a difference, but hey, let's go at it as well. LFO1 to the fine tuning here. Now this is gonna be at 0.16. So let's bring this down to 0.16, something like that here. And if we hop into the LFO category over here, this is gonna be a triangle wave. So let's go ahead and change this to triangle. And then we have our rates gonna be 4.55, something kind of like that. So it's very subtle. A little bit of that wavering there. Okay. So now let's change this to free running so it doesn't restart every single time in the same spot because it can get a little bit annoying. So now let's look at our filter. So we're using the MS-20, which is one of my favorites, I always say. So MS-20, let's bring our cutoff all the way down to 20 hertz and we barely have anything. So this is gonna be dependent on a lot of modulation here for the second envelope. So this is at 0.49. So envelope to drag and drop this here to 0.49, something like that. So we have that. So while we're on the envelopes, let's just make sure we have everything, I guess, uh, <laughs> in order here. So the attack, decay, and the sustain, we don't have to worry about for uh, the, the envelope VCA, but we do have to add the release at 207. So let's bring our release up to 207, right about here. Now for this next one here, the envelope two, what we're modulating the cutoff knob with, the attack's gonna be one millisecond, which is again, is default. And then our decay is 343. So we can bring this down 343. And then our sustain is very small at 0.152. So we can hold down a little bit of our base so we can hear some stuff. Cause we don't want the filter to close all the way back down to 20 Hertz. Once we're sustaining, that's why we have a little bit of this value here to hold the filter open just a little bit while we're going to be sustaining. And then the release is 100 milliseconds, which again is default. So we can skip over that guy. Okay. So next up, if we look at our cutoff, this is also going to be modulated by macro one, but at 0.25, which I called grit in this case, instead of cutoff, because it kind of gives it a little bit of a different tonality. It's it, it does work with the cutoff. Like that's the same thing, but it gives it a little bit of a different feeling and you'll see why in just a little while here. So next up we have the resonance and this is gonna be at 0.46 on macro two. So we can drag and drop at 0.46 and boom, that's done. Then we just double click and uh, rename the resonance. We can add however much that we'd like. Maybe something like that for now. Okay, so now we have kind of this like round softest, softishness of the sound. Of the sound. And now we need to add a little bit of the attack and this is where the utility engine comes into play. So if we go to our utility engine, let's turn this on here and we're using this mid drive sample. So we just have to scroll a few times till we find mid drive right here. And if we play a note, we don't really hear it. And that's because first of all, it's going to the first filter and we're cutting off a lot. So we want to send this to the second filter. And now we just hear the sustaining, which we don't really want. 
So let's bring our volume all the way down, and we're gonna use envelope three and drag and drop this here. Now, if you look at the depth, so we go to our utility engine here, and we see this volumes all the way down, and then we see this envelope three is modulating this at 0.42, so we can go to 0.42, a little bit something like that here. So we hear this note once we play a note, but it's way too long. This needs to decay much faster. So envelope three is gonna be one millisecond attack, which is default, but the decay is gonna be 89 milliseconds. So we need to bring this down here. So there's just a little bit of that here. All right, so it gives a little bit of that subtlety, almost like you're plucking the string or something. We have that, and then if we look here, I don't know if we, yeah, we changed the release to 112, which I don't even know why that is. It's literally pointless, but anyway. Okay, so this is pretty much set up for, for this spot here. Now, if we go to our effects and we look and see what's going on here, we can see that we first start off with an EQ, so let's go here and change this delay out for an EQ. Now, the first one that we're targeting on this first band is going to be 79.8 hertz, so let's go to our first band, and then 79.8 <laughs> hertz, something like that here. 79, that's close enough. And then we're actually increasing the gain here by about 2.59 deeps because we want some of that low end as well. cool there and then on the second band we're actually removing some of this low end here this kind of boxy muddy stuff at 135 so second band let's bring this to 135 somewhere around here and then we kind of bring this down about what do we do here 2.8 deeps and remember you don't want to go too much right maybe 2.4 2. something but the more you take out this gets going to kind of break the sound so just a little bit of a dip there and then we're going to do a little bit of a high shelf at 5k and what are we doing here what's how much are we pushing this at 1.68 so it's by default 5k so we just bring this to a little bit like that 1.5 what do we do yeah 1.5 that's fine okay so next up we have a compressor so let's go ahead and add this guy here now basically this guy's ratio is going to be about eight to one ish or so, something like that. And then we're bringing, bringing down the threshold just a little bit. So we get a little bit of a tickle, a little, little tickle guys, a little tickle. Something like that. And then our attack is going to be a little bit past 10, maybe 11 or 12. And then a release we can, what do we do for our release on this guy here? 89. 84, that's probably okay around here. Okay. You already have kind of a solid baseline. It can be even kind of funky too, depending on how much resonance that you put in there. But anyway, the next one here, this is gonna be a fun one. So this is gonna be a distortion module that we're adding and we're using the wave folder here and we're changing the type, not from a, not to a sine wave, but to a triangle wave. And then the drive is gonna be at 28.4. So increasing this. So something like that, but our dry wet is going to be at 0.14. So 14%. Right, so that's a kind of idea that we're doing here. And this is actually going to be on this macro called fold it. As we can see here, there's gonna be a 0.14 and this is the third one. So what we can do is drag and drop this macro three over on the dry wet and actually bring this down and go to 0.13 and then relabel this as fold it. There we go. Then we can have it like that. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do here is on the FXB, we're gonna add some delay, and I don't know why it's in the middle one there, but whatever. We're gonna add some delay, and this is gonna be a subtle delay. This isn't necessarily like delay, 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 like a huge delay, but it's kind of just giving it a little bit of space here. So the value is gonna be at 12%. So you know what we can actually do is just increase this macro four, label this as effects, drag and drop this to the dry wet, bring this down, and what we're doing here is gonna be at 0.12 or 12%, so we can just do, do it like that. So we'll still hear it and our macro's already done. All right, so we have a little bit of bass there. Now, this is gonna be at one over 16, so it's gonna be a little bit faster than most stuff here. Feedback, 0.352, which I believe is default here. And then we're just gonna do some of these uh, EQs here. Kind of giving it just a little bit of something there right after you press or release the notes there. Okay, so next up, we're gonna break some rules and we're gonna put some reverb on here, pretty crazy, right? So let's select our reverb right over here and then under presets, we can select the room. Now, this is a cool preset because 
it gives you obviously a room, but if we dial down the dry wet, it kind of just gives us more of a space for our base to kind of sit in. And generally they're always like, don't put a reverb on your base, but sometimes it's, it's kind of nice. You gotta break some rules sometimes, right? Crack some eggs to make omelets or something stupid like that. <laughs> So 0.28 for this macro so we can bring this down and drag and drop and go 0.28, something right around here. And there you go, nothing too crazy. And then I believe our we didn't change anything here for the sizes, yeah, 0.306, yep. Yeah. So this should all just be default and you can probably even bring back this low pass frequency just a little bit just to be sure. It's a subtle little just kind of adding that stuff there. And that's pretty much how this patch is done. There's nothing too crazy about it, but if you play with these macros, get some nasty bass, and maybe even do like like synthy stuff with this bass. So that notice on some of the synthwave tracks that I made, the the bass harp carries almost the entire track, but there's times where the bridge happens, or maybe a slow down part, or you're kind of breaking everything down, and you don't want the bass harp to be constantly going. So something like this. Might be kind of nice to just kind of hold that fort down a little bit or even automate some of the some of these uh, macros here where you can have a kind of a soft bass here and to bring up the fold it maybe the grit as well maybe the resonance and then pause drop the drums and then back into your bass harp something like that might be kind of cool but yeah so that's how you make this patch if you'd like to get it for free there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours thank you so much for watching hopefully you learn something and see you in the next video